Hi, I'm Gordon Palmer, Minister here at Claremont Parish Church and welcome to our first Claremont Calling of 2021. And it's one in which we'll be featuring a couple of short videos, but doing that with part of the thinking to about our place, our life as a congregation, our church as disciples called to make other disciples. I want to be a church where we are, in a sense, stronger at the center, that is deeper convictions about who we are and what God is calling us to, and also helping to equip one another for that. But not just moving into that uh, stronger center, but also reaching out further beyond, for Christ has called us into mission to be faith sharers, to be salt and light in the world. And so that part of sharing faith and We've talked in previous months about uh, our series, Come and See, and also um, how you can introduce folks to reading the Gospels and through Word One to One. I want to think again about these things in the, in the coming days as well. And what we're going to see, first of all, is a, a short video extract from Word One to One, and just ordinary folks sharing Jesus and even being able to do it during lockdown. It's like my eyes have been opened, so things are more clearer now. Hello, my name's Becky. Um, I live in Rochester. I'm married to Russ. I have four children, grown-up children, three grandchildren, and I've been a Christian for nearly 40 years. Hi, my name is Tracy. Um, I'm married to Andy. I have two grown-up sons, one teenage son, and three stepchildren, and I live next door to Becky. Early in the new year, Tracy came round and knocked on my door and said, um, oh, Becky, have you, have you got a Bible? I had a Bible on my bedside table um, from a few years back, was going to church with a couple of my husband's childhood friends, just picked it up one evening and started to read. My eyesight isn't as great as it used to be, so I was having problems and so come straight round to Beck and asked if she had one with um, bigger words. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I said, oh, yes, OK, that's, that's really interesting. I'll go and see what I can do. Came home, had a rummage on the shelves, um, went back and knocked on her door and said, here you are, try, try this Bible, but would you consider doing something where we could share the Bible together, we could talk about what it means and how it, that affects us and the way we live. Um, would you like to do that? And she said, oh, yes, I would. I, I would really like to do that. I thought, well, that's great. And luckily I had the word one-to-one -one on my shelf. And so I thought this would be a really good opportunity to, to use that to help Tracy access God's word in a better way for her. Tracy and I quickly settled into a lovely rhythm of using the word one-to-one. -one. Um, the way it's set out, it's set out in episodes. We weren't actually getting through a whole episode in a session. The conversations were ranging far and wide. It was absolutely great. Such a privilege. Um, and then lockdown happened. And all of a sudden, we felt we couldn't meet. And Tracy had we were talking over the fence, had said to me, oh, you know, aren't we going to be able to meet? Tony? I'm, I really miss it. I really want to carry on with, with this, looking at the Bible. It's really interesting. So I said, well, I'm, I'm sure we can sort something out. You know, I'm sure God's got a way around this. And I gave it a bit of thought, and the weather being glorious as it was in those first few weeks of lockdown, um, I suddenly thought, but we're always in the garden talking over the fence. Why don't we just put the chairs at the bottom of the garden and carry on with these sessions through the fence? So that's literally what we did. And we, we just had a wonderful, wonderful time. <laughs> Reading the Bible with Becky, has, it's been amazing. Um, she's so helpful and she puts up with me. And, it, you know, with, with all the questions that I'm firing at her and at Russ, over the garden fence. Um, they're always there and they're always patient as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely um, fantastic. Um, in, they're an absolute inspiration to me, really do. I would really recommend using the word one-to-one -one, um, as a way of sharing the Bible 
particularly with non-believers, the format, just the way it's laid out, it's really accessible, not intimidating on any level, um, just really easy to use. And I think it's a great tool. Christians should share the Bible with non-Christians to get the word out there. Simple. Well, as I said, just ordinary folks, just neighbours, um, introducing the Bible reading with one another. For it's not sharing faith is not about getting folks to join church or even necessarily to come to church, but to meet Jesus. Wouldn't it have been easy for the lady in that video to say, oh yeah, I've got a Bible, here it is. Oh, by the way, would you like to come to church with me next Sunday? That would have been all right. But even better is to say, I can give you a Bible, and how, how would you think, feel about us sitting down and reading it? Well, it might seem scary, it might seem a big ask, but look what it did. It built up vistas for someone. I gave someone not just um, some ideas about faith, but it, it brought them to know Jesus, brought them into the kingdom. Now, we might not often get opportunities like someone coming to our door and saying, oh, by the way, have you got a Bible? But we all can be on the lookout for opportunities, praying for opportunities, ready to help if somebody asks, not just to point them to church, but to point them in particular to Jesus, whose church we are. Now, that might not be easy. Some folks might think, oh, I don't want to get all kind of holiness. I'm not one for ramming it down folks' throat. But that's not what it is. See that in that video we've just watched. Somebody just asks a question, would you like to read the Bible with me? And the answer is, yes, I'd love to. That's not ramming anything down anyone's throats. And it might seem a big ask, but let's face it, we we're only have heard about Jesus because some people said yes to a big ask. Read the story of the early church and the Acts of the Apostles right from the outset. They were being persecuted and, and hurt for speaking about Jesus. Told by the authorities in Jerusalem, okay, we'll let you go from jail, but don't speak about Jesus again. But they did. They took big risks. And then we know that later that the church spread into the Roman Empire and how so much of the Roman Empire um, was geared against Christianity and trying to throw Christians to lions and to stop this message spreading and so so on. And we know also that later on persecution came and has come in many different ways and forms. People took risks, people responded to the big asks. John Knox was once a galley slave. People were burned at the stake for translating the Bible into the, um, the local language. And we would never have heard if these people hadn't responded with a yes to God's big ask. And it won't do for us to say, well, that's a bit difficult for me. That's taking me out of my, my comfort zone. We would not have heard about Jesus. If Jesus himself and if Jesus' followers and years after him had not stepped out of their comfort zone. The persecution, of course, we know is still going on in the world, and we're going to hear in just a moment from another video about North Korea. <clears throat> it's from the organization Open Doors, and um, we're not showing it as a fundraiser, although if anyone wants to respond in that way, the details are, are on the video. I want to say that we at Claremont do already support Open Doors and, and make contributions, but we'll show this really as the seriousness that's involved in following Jesus. Here's something of what's going on in North Korea today. 어느 한 겨울 12월 말에 영하 28도였던 새벽 1시에 현장에 도착했는데 만나기로 했던 현장 사역자가 전화를 받지 않고 나오지 않았던 것입니다. 세 시간 동안 수차례 동안 전화를 계속해도 전화를 받지 않았습니다. 새벽 4시에 사역자의 번호로 제게 전화를 건 사람은 그 현장 사역자가 아닌 다른 남성이었습니다. 
그는 저에게 누구냐고 되물었습니다. 저는 순간적으로 아차 싶어서 그 전화기 카드를 빼서 부셔버리고 전화기도 돌로 깨서 하수구에 버렸습니다. 그 시간에 그 지역의 어느 곳도 갈 수가 없어서 밤새 추위에 떨다가 아침에 그 지역을 빠져나왔던 적이 있습니다. 그 시간에 만나기로 했던 현장 사역자는 이미 엑스고 공안국과 북한 보이부 합동조사에 잡혀서 조사를 받고 있던 중이었습니다. 지금 제가 현재 하고 있는 사역은 이미 많은 기존의 북한 사람들이 X국에 와서 복음을 듣고 들어간 사람들이 이분들이 계속적으로 북한 내에서 X국으로 나오지 않고 영적인 지원과 또 물질적인 지원을 통해 지하교회가 지속적으로 유지되도록 돕고 있습니다. 이 지구상에서 가장 기독교인을 핍박하는 곳이 바로 북한 땅입니다. 이 시간에도 고난과 고통 가운데 있지만 그래도 하나님을 바라보고 기도하는 고통 가운데 기도하는 내 형제 자매들이 있기 때문에 그곳에 우리의 마음을 또 저의 마음을 계속 쏟아부어야 한다고 생각합니다. 여러분의 기도로 그들이 그 땅에서 하나님의 거룩함을 예배할 수가 있습니다. 여러분의 기도와 후원이 있었기 때문에 그들이 아직까지도 없어지지 않고 거룩하신 하나님을 예배하고 있습니다. 
Now the border is much more heavily guarded on both sides. You need to spend thousands of dollars on bribes, and even, even then you don't have a guarantee. Often the soldiers have a quota. They need to arrest a certain number of border crossers. And then once in China, you're illegal and can be arrested. Many women are trafficked into marriages with Chinese men. It's an awful fate, but for many of them still better than staying in North Korea. Many say that Christians come to China so that they can receive Bible teaching and fellowship as well as food. And then, amazingly, many believers choose to return home to North Korea. And they're doing that so they can witness to Jesus. So one of the Korean believers is asked, what is your vision for the North Korean church? And he says four words, survive, strengthen, equip, go. If you're desperately hungry, he says, you can't do ministry. So the first concern of the persecuted church is survival, but it doesn't stop there. And even though circumstances are difficult, the church, you see, wants to be God's witnesses and to reach their own people with the gospel. Where does that leave us by comparison? And then lastly, from a prayer smuggled out of North Korea, the writer of the prayer has said this, Lord, we give thanks to you that we have become the seed of the gospel. Thanks to you that we are the hope and the dry land that is North Korea. We thank you that we can sow seeds with tears in our eyes, while at the same time we dream about the green pastures that Christ will lead us to. Please use us. We are Christ's army and want to bring the gospel to the ends of the world. We want to be your witnesses and spread your blessings. Let me be your worker for the glory. Hold my hands until I meet you. Let me be obedient wherever you lead me. Let me be your joy and a good Christian. So she prays. Now, I'm not saying that we all need to go to North Korea. That's not likely. That's something that's called for very few of us to do. But we are, if we're a Christian, called to be a follower of Jesus, called to be a disciple, called to be looking at ways in which we can share faith and make other disciples. So again, I'm saying that we are starting a couple of courses at, at Claremont on mission shaped living and on Claremont family life. Mission shaped living about how do we live in a way that looks outward with the eyes of Christ and the world around us. And Claremont Family Life that has said, what is involved for me? What does it mean for me to be a disciple? What are the promises I make to Jesus as I follow? Get in touch with the church office if you want to find out more about these courses. They'll be starting in the coming week. We'd love to have more of us involved. And when we look at what it cost Jesus, when we look at what it's cost people down through the years, the Wycliffs, the Knoxes of the world, when we look at what it costs to be a Christian in places like North Korea today, and then when we look and see that all of these ministries nevertheless were fruitful for the glory of God, we need to ask ourselves how seriously we are taking. We need to, the, the, the call to follow, how much we can be, do and how we can better equip ourselves to be more part of a disciple-making people that God has called us to be. Thank you.